Workers at Japan's Fukushima Daiichi plant seem to come across new problems and new challenges every day at the damaged nuclear facility. Their latest find, extremely high levels of radiation inside the building that houses Reactor 2. Tokyo Electric Power Company engineers sent a robot into the building Wednesday to take video and measure radiation. TEPCO spokespersons say instruments detected a reading of 880 millisieverts per hour on the fifth floor. The area is 4.5 meters above the reactor containment vessel. TEPCO analysts suspect radioactive substances that leaked from reactor 2 moved through the location. But the images and data taken by the robot haven't helped them find the exact route the contaminants traveled. Spokespersons say the teams have found no major damage on the fifth floor. Experts believe Reactor 2 released the largest amount of radiation during the accident at Fukushima Daiichi, but they haven't determined how it escaped the containment vessel. TEPCO officials need to find and repair the damaged parts of the reactor so they can recover melted nuclear fuel and then start the decommissioning process. But they say high radiation often stops workers from entering the building. They note this means it will take a long time to pinpoint the problems in the containment vessel. Shareholders suing Tokyo Electric Power Company had their first day in court and came out swinging. They accused utility executives of being responsible for the Fukushima nuclear disaster by ignoring warnings about earthquakes and tsunami. The 42 shareholders are suing 27 former and current TEPCO presidents, chairmen, and other executives. The officials have held posts since 2002. That's when the government warned a huge earthquake could strike the area around the Fukushima plant. The plaintiffs argue the executives are responsible for the nuclear accident because they failed to take necessary measures to protect the plant from the quake and tsunami. They're demanding damages of about $70 billion. The executives say they did, not, they, did what, uh, they did what was necessary in line with the government's safety standards. The company has argued nuclear power plants should continue to play a role in Japan. The plaintiffs say they want top TEPCO executives to testify in court. They're aiming to clarify who is responsible for the accident. Japanese author Kenzaburo Oe has criticized nuclear power in his writing and in speeches. The Nobel Prize winning novelist is urging the government to abandon it altogether. Oe and three academics submitted a petition to the cabinet. More than six million people across the country signed the document. Oe said he opposes the government's plan to restart two reactors at the Oe nuclear plant in Fukui prefecture. The plant would be the first to resume operations since the last commercial reactor still running was shut down last month. Oe said the accident last year at Fukushima Daiichi has shown people and nuclear plants cannot coexist. I believe the only way to preserve human life is to completely turn away from nuclear power. Oe and his fellow campaigners plan to hold an anti-nuclear rally next month in Tokyo.
Japanese companies will join hands to build large-scale solar power plants in Canada. It's the first major overseas project in the solar energy field by a Japanese group. Trading house Mitsubishi Corporation will team up with Osaka Gas and electronics maker Sharp. They'll build nine solar farms in the province of Ontario. Their combined output is expected to be 100,000 kilowatts. These three firms will jointly set up a power generation enterprise and begin construction by the end of this year. The cost is estimated to be about $500 million. Mitsubishi and Sharp are working to expand their solar power business in Japan and abroad. It comes at a time when renewable energy sources are attracting more attention worldwide.